So I've talked about erosion um, processes. I want to talk a little bit about deposition now. Uh, deposition simply is where the material that is being carried by the river is dropped. And if you look in this um, first picture, you can see that all of this uh, material we have here, all, all the, the kind of eroded material that's come from up, upstream um, is, is kind of being suspended and some of it's on the thing, some of it's being carried by suspension, some of it's carried by saltation. Um, but if we look on the second one, this is where it has been dropped and therefore it is kind of settled at the bottom. And, and I'm going to look at the factors um, that kind of cause deposition to occur. One factor why de deposition can occur can be a decrease in the energy or speed um, of a river. So here is an example of a cross section of a river which has got um, suspended material in it. Um, I'm going to imagine that this river has flooded because of an increase in rainfall. And so what's happened here is once the river is flooded outside the river channel, um, the, the amount of water is actually shallower. So it's much shallower than in the main stream. So in outside, because it's shallower, more of this water is actually touching um, the, the ground. There is more friction being caused. Um, with the uh, the water has more friction pulling it and because of that that means it will there's more friction pulling on the on the base of that water it will slow down and when um water slows down its natural reaction is whatever it is carrying it drops so when we get a, a decrease in speed and this can happen for example outside of uh, the main channel when something floods um, when there is a decrease in the speed of the water we see um, the material that is in the river will be dropped the other thing to remember about energy and deposition is that the larger the material, the more energy it will take to transport that material. Therefore, so if we had a flood situation like this, the largest material would be the first um, to be dropped. So if right by the river, you would get all the largest material dropped because it takes a lot of energy to move it there and so as soon as the uh, the river starts running out of energy outside the channel it would drop it but that means as we got further away gradually the material would be smaller because you can you can carry this material much further because it takes less energy and as if we get a uh, this flooding regularly on both sides um, we get all the largest material building up so it kind of creates these kind of banks is what we call levees, which I'm going to talk to you about at a later date. Other scenarios where you would get deposition um, would be on this right example. This is where the mouth of the, the River Thames is uh, reaching the sea. And as we can see here, this all this energy that was concentrated is spreading out and therefore it is um, losing the energy that was concentrated in the river um, and it's also slowing down. But it's also meeting the sea which the seawater is going to be a lot denser and therefore that's going to kind of act as a barrier and um, because that barrier that's again slow you know slowing it down and the energy is being dispersed um, so what we're getting there is we're getting deposition occurring and in, in places where um, you've got a really heavy uh, sediment load um, you you can get um, deltas forming this is not a delta this is uh, just the river thames estuary but these are depositional um, landforms. The other example on the left here is where a river is entering a lake and that change in the energy, again, spreading out. And again, this is a, an example of a river with a very heavy load. Um, that is energy is spreading out and therefore the, the, all the material that is being carried as the, the river loses energy, it drops that material. We need to also remember that in terms of deposition, a river has a certain capacity, which basically means that all the sediment that a river is carrying, which we call the load, it can only carry a certain amount, a bit like this guy here. He only has a certain amount of energy uh, to be able to carry 
in this case, the stone, but this is trying to say that this guy is the river and the river only has a certain amount of energy to carry a certain amount of material or load. Therefore, if we get um, an increase in the load, and this can be to lots of erosion, then what will happen is the river won't have the energy to carry it and therefore we will get higher deposition rates when the load increases. The last thing I want to look at is how river discharge uh, affects the deposition rate. Um, this is a meander from a river in Scotland um, and this was taken in summer when generally the evaporation rates uh, would be higher and because of that the discharge would be lower. Um, this means that um, the river is more likely to deposit material um, at this time because it, it doesn't have the same velocity, it doesn't have the same energy as it would have at other times of year. Um, because the discharge is lower, more of the, the water is in touch with the base of the river and there's always more friction, so it's more slower, so it, deposition would be higher. And so even though, uh, I'll explain why we get this deposition here when we talk about meanders um, a little bit more, but if this, in the winter time, this would all be covered uh, by the, the river because the discharge would be higher. And therefore we would um, get more of this material would be eroded or transported away. So when in winter, and this is only for the UK because of the conditions we have here, um, when the discharge is higher, and this is because rainfall at this period of time is higher, we would get more erosion and less deposition. So when the discharge of changes for whatever conditions, we will see a change in the deposition rate.